Hello, this is Mr. Cardoso, and in this video, we are going to take you through a Visual Basic program from beginning to end, so you can see how it works. Um, we'll do the same program we did in class, uh, which was the age program. Um, it takes in an a, it asks the user for an age in years, then calculates their age in days. So very simple program. So we start here with the Visual Basic. Once we open Visual Basic Express, uh, we want to make a new project, so we go to File and then we click on new project when we're starting a new project and make sure you choose the Windows form application down here I'm going to choose an appropriate name for my program so I'll call this you know the age in days program so just the age in days is fine and I click OK and of course then it loads up my standard form and selected windows now on the right hand side I like having my solution explorer window if you don't see this here uh, make sure you go to view and choose um, Solution Explorer here so that that shows up and if I also like to see my properties if you don't see that you go to view and you select properties window so that that shows up there as well and toolboxes here in a tab if you want that uh, the toolbox to show up constantly all of these have the little pin here that you can pin down or unpin so if you pin it down it stays stuck um, if you unpin it, it hides itself when you're not using it. So here's my form. Um, this is where I'm going to add all my Windows controls. Um, so I'm going to start by clicking on the form. You can see that it's selected by these um, little handles on the corners of the, of the form. I'm going to go up to the top and in the properties window for the form, because the form is selected, for the name I am going to choose FRM age in days. Now notice that for this, um, this is like your variable name, the user never sees this. You use it in the code, so it's only for you the programmer. There are some rules, um, there's not allowed to be any spaces. You should use the camelback format and the first three letters reflects what object um, that you are using. So because this is a form, the first three letters that I use is FRM. Okay, If it was a button and so on, like we'll see shortly, it'll be BTM. So FRM agent days. Now up here at the top it says form one. So I don't like that. That is what the user sees. So I come down to text, and under text I'm going to put in um, age in days program. Now for this one the text if I press enter it shows up over here, age and days at the top of the form, the Windows form, just like a Windows program. Um, there are no real rules for this uh, text. You can have spaces, you can name it whatever you like, it's whatever the user is going to see in the program. Unlike the variable uh, variable name that you put up the top here, um, for the programmer you're not allowed to have spaces and you should use the formal camelback format and again the first three letters for the prefix. So we've named our form, um, you can see that now if we press the play button, it's going to run our program as if a user was running the program. So here it is, it runs the program. This is the standard Windows form provided for us by Visual Basic. You can see these buttons, they work. Um, okay, this maximizes our form and this closes our form. So we have quite a nifty program already made. We just have to add things to our form here to make the program work. So we're going to start with, um, I'm going to pin this down so I can see my form. We're going to start with adding a text box to get the user's age in years. So what's your age in years? So I'm going to go to common controls here because it's not showing and I'm going to drag a text box onto my screen. Now because this is a text box I'm going to get an age in here. It doesn't need to be that big. If I needed to expand it I could expand it using the controls. For the name here in the properties I'm going to use TXT for the first three letters and I'm going to call this age in days, sorry age in years because from this text box I'm getting the user's age and years. So if you're 15 years old or 20 years old and so on. If I scroll down to text, um, if I put something in the text it would actually show up in the text box. You can see that showing up here. Right now I want to leave this blank because I want the user to put in that information. So they're going to put in their age in this. Now it seems fairly um, simple there. The problem there is there's no instruction to the user to tell the user to put their age in there. So I'm going to use a label for that purpose. So I'm going to go to the left side here, grab a label, and for the label under the name, the first three letters for the label should be, you guessed it, LBL, 
and you know maybe I could put here instruction so this is the instruction to the user on what to do so I'll be able instruction so I'm gonna go down here to text and this time under the text I'm gonna take label one out and I'm gonna put here please enter your age in years okay and put a colon there if I hit enter that shows up okay so now um, the user has an instruction and they know what to do in the text box okay now once the user we have to imagine how the program the user is going to use this program so once the user is um, has entered their age they have to do something to generate the answer we're going to display the answer down here that their age in days is something so what's going to generate the program from taking the age from here and then calculating it and doing all of this stuff so what we can use is a button to do that generation this is the event so the user is going to enter their age and then click the button and that button is the event that's going to make everything happen so let's go up here and call this a btn calculate because then we're going to calculate from the user's age and years we're going to calculate their age and days so we'll call it btn calculate again notice that when I change the name it doesn't change the text on here if I want to change the text I go down to the text here and I put calculate I wouldn't put btn calculate because that would just be weird so you can see that calculate shows up on the actual button and now underneath I need another label that is going to describe or give the answer so you know down here we're gonna put once the user puts their information in here so we can put here your age in days is colon so the answer is gonna show up right here beside it if I go up to the top here I can put LBL age in days because that's the label that's going to display the age in days so now my form looks a little big that's all about all of the controls I'm going to need so I'm going to take my form and scroll it down the first step in any visual basic program is always you know adding all the controls that you need to your form like we've done here and naming all of your uh, objects appropriately so I mean this name property you should give everything an appropriate name before you do any programming you want to make sure all the names are appropriate appropriately named so that um, when we're programming it's not confusing so you see we've done that here okay now we are ready to program um, in fact let's run it before we program probably press run now and you can see the program is running here um, if I enter you know my age is 24 and I press calculate nothing happens because we haven't added the code so we want we have to run it to see you know how is the user going to use this they're going to type their age in here following the instruction and press calculate and so this is where all of the code has to go it's got to go under this event clicking calculate is an event so I'm going to double click I'm going to close that program as I've done here another way of closing is pressing the stop key I'm going to double click on calculate when I double click on calculate it takes me to the event procedure for that button so I'm going to untab this here for a second get, get some more space so what this means is when this button btn calculate is clicked run this code Okay. Um, so these two lines of code must always be there do not, never delete them um, but this is an event procedure so for every different um, item you can have different event procedures so in this event procedure um, what we're going to do is we are going to um, create some variables and because we've got to gather the information so to comment in Visual Basic we use the apostrophe and I'm going to say declare variables so just like in Turing we're going to declare some variables um, for the age and day, age and years and age and days um, and this, those should both be of type integer so how we declare variables in Visual Basic is we use the keyword dim so I say dim and just like we were doing before we have to use the first three letters to identify what type of variable it is this is different than Turing in Turing you could just say age in days or you, let's start with years you could just say age in years is your variable but here we're going to say int again following camelback format int age in years to identify that this is an integer variable and then I say as integer Okay, now I can declare again two variables in the same line 
as we did in Turing, just by putting a comma in between the variable names. So int, age, in days. So there's my two variables. So I've declared them. Now I need to gather inputs. Okay. If I scroll over here, it's underlined in green. It's just telling me that these variables have not been used yet. And so we're going to use them. So here's my input section. In my input section, I need to gather the information from the text box. So get info from text box and put into um, the variable. So uh, let's say uh, int age in years because that's what I'm getting from the text box. I'm getting the user's age in years. So um, this is where I want to put it, int age in years. So I start off, this is with the destination. Where is it going into? So it's going into this variable. And on the right-hand side of the equal sign, where is it coming from? And it's coming from the text box. So I can't remember what my text box is called, but I do remember the first three letters that I use is txt. And usually, uh, okay, there we go. Visual Basic come, drops down and it gives me some um, help. So it says TXC Asian Years, and that's in fact the name of my text box. So that's the variable name where it's used. So TXT Asian Years dot text. Okay, that's the that's the information. I'm not trying to take the text box and assign it to the integer variable. I'm trying to take the text in the text box and assign it to this variable. So I'm taking the text from this text box and putting it into the left side here in Asian years. So that's my input. I've gathered my input from the user. Now, I need to do my processing. Processing is simple here. We just need to calculate the age in days. So int age in days equals, now that we've copied, got the information from the text box and put it into the integer variable, um, int age in years, I can say int age in years multiply by 365 since there are 365 days in one year. And I can put a little comment here, not counting leap years. Okay, because leap years you know you have an extra day. And then finally, I'll put um, the output now is the is the like sort of the reverse of this. We have to start by where we want to put it, and we want to put the output, basically the user's age and days. We want to put that in a label. So we start by typing LBL. Those were the first two letters, and now we have two LBL. So which one was it? So remember, LBL instruction was the one at the top that told the user to put in their age and years. So it's not that one. So it must be this LBL age and days. So let's double click on that one. That's where we're going to put our answer. But we're not going to put it on the label itself. We're going to put it on the label's text property. So we've got to do LBL age and days dot text equals. Now, what do I want to display? I could actually just go ahead and do int age in days. And that will work. So if I run this program now, so I press the run key, and it takes a little while to load up. It says, please enter your age and years. Um, so I enter, you know, my age is 15, let's say and I press calculate. Now when I press this calculate, again it comes up to here and it goes btn calculate click. When this button is clicked, do all of this. Declare these variables, copy this 15 into this int age and years, multiply it by 365, and then display it in this label down here. So all of that's going to happen when this calculate button is clicked. So I click calculate, and there you go, 4575. So it's working, but our text disappeared, which said your age and days is. So if I want that to display, I can stop, close the program, come back here and actually put, you know, your age in days is. Now, if you recall in Turing, at this point, we would put a comma and say, okay, now we want to join this with, a, with what's in this variable. Um, but in Visual Basic, the syntax is different. We don't use a comma. We use an ampersand or shift and seven. With shift and seven, you get the ampersand, and that will work there. So now if I run it again. Um, here we have again we put like so let's say your age is 20 we press calculate now it says your age in days is 7300 but now it has the sentence and I think I had a spelling mistake your I have put the R back in here okay so this is an example of an event procedure we only had one event if I use these tabs back here I can go back to my design window 
Um, we only have uh, one real event procedure here that we're asking the user to generate, which is the calculate button. Let's say we wanted to add another button. So I'm gonna just to give you an idea of uh, another type. So we have two events going on, and and of course events can happen not just with buttons, with radio buttons and so on. By double clicking on them, you make you bring up the event procedure that handles when that button or that action takes place. So this button, let's just make it an exit button, just to give you an example of two events procedures. So btn exit. I'm going to go down to the text field, and then I'm going to put, you get it, you guessed it, exit. Okay, so this is my exit button. So the user has two options, press the X key, um, sorry, the X uh, button up here, or the exit button that we're programming down here. So if I double click now on the exit button, you can see, I'm going to unpin these so you can see both of them. Let's unpin everything here. You can see I have two event procedures now separated by this horizontal line. This event procedure is for when the calculate button is clicked, do all of this. Now, when the button, uh, the exit button is clicked, do all of this. Well, it's empty, so nothing's going to happen. You know, we can prove that by running it. Okay, we can press the exit key, and it doesn't exit because we didn't put any code in the event procedure. Again, these are both two separate event procedures, one and two. This event procedure handles the event of when the calculate button is clicked, and this event procedure handles the event of when the exit button is clicked. So here, simply the code to exit a program in Visual Basic is END for end, and that is that is it. Okay. So now we have two event procedures handling two separate events. So the user in Visual Basic can choose because it's event driven programming. They can choose if they want to click the calculate button or the exit button. If they choose to click the exit button then the end key is run and the program is exited. Okay. If they choose to hit the calculate button um, then they, you know, usually they'll put in a number here 20 and they'll press calculate and then they'll get their answer. Okay. So the user is sort of the queen or king in Visual Basic as they choose what they want to do and we write event procedures that handle each particular event. I hope you uh, understood everything in that example. Take care.